ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the venlas badge limited q1 fy22 earnings conference call this conference call may contain forward looking statements about the company which are based on the belief opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call this statement are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainty that are difficult to predict as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes to the need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr hitesh vindla managing director vindla biotech limited thank you and over to you sir Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to all of you present on our first post results conference call to discuss the financial performance of quarter ended June 30th, 2021. We hope all of you and your loved ones are healthy and safe in the wake of ongoing pandemic, and the recent downward trajectory on COVID-19 cases is certainly a good sign, and we sincerely hope that the pandemic gets over really soon. I hope uh, everyone must have got an opportunity to go through our financial results and investor presentation which has been uploaded on the stock exchange as well as on our company website. For the benefit of our of all the participants, I would like to discuss about the company in brief initially, followed by the financial highlights for the quarter which will be shared by our CFO uh, Ms Komal Gupta. Windless Biotech is among the top 5 players in the domestic pharmaceutical formulations contract development and manufacturing industry in india in terms of revenue with over two decades of experience in manufacturing both solid and liquid pharmaceutical dosage forms and significant experience in providing specialized capabilities including high potency control substances and low solubility products the company provides a comprehensive range of cdmo services ranging from product discovery development licensing commercial manufacturing of generic products including complex generics in compliance with the current good manufacturing practices and with focus on improved safety efficacy and cost the company also has a growing trade generics business through 700 plus stockists and distributors across india and is also present in exports to row markets i will first take you through the company's cdmo business This vertical is focused on providing products and services across diverse range of pharmaceutical and nutraceutical generic products. The company provides CDMO services and products ranging from discovery, development, licensing, commercial manufacturing and complex products in compliance with GMP and such products are sold to Indian and foreign pharma MNCs who market the products under their own brand names. the company has consistently maintained strong and long lasting relationships with the leading indian pharma companies and has provided cdmo services to seven of the top 10 indian formulation pharma companies cdmo vertical contributed roughly around 85% to the consolidated revenue for fy21 the company is well diversified product portfolio predominantly overlaps with the fast growing chronic therapies and high margin complex generics uh, products chronic and subchronic products contributed 60% and acute contributed 40% of the total revenue from operations for fy21 similarly complex generic contributed 68% and conventional products and others contributed remaining 32% of total revenue from operations for fy21 number of cdmo products catered increased at a cagr of 23% between fy19 and 21 to reach uh, 1364 as of fy21 the company's cdmo revenue grew at a robust 19% cagr between the same period to reach 362 crores as of fy21 largely driven by the rapid pace of customer addition to reach 204 customers by the end of fiscal 21 key factors led, led to expansion of uh, of customer base are addition of multinational and domestic customers over the years product excellence which includes dosage innovation developing complex generic products manufacturing excellence which includes 
uh, delivery track record, responsiveness, quality, and technical standards while planning capital expenditure and investments in specialized services and equipments for dedicated infrastructure. Our highest customer con customer's contribution reduced from 12.3% in FY19 to about 11% in FY21. We are witnessing multiple industry uh, rail wins in CDMO vertical. Globally, one third of the R&D outsourced to CDMO companies in formulation segment, and India is emerging as a key player in the CDMO segment. Reasons for outsourcing by pharma companies are flexibility and reduced cost in the business model of, of <clears throat> large pharma companies, growing demand for generics and biologics, the rise in the number of drug approvals, and end-to-end -end service and technical specialties of contract manufacturers, and increase in off-patent products to aid the outsourcing segment. India stands, to be, uh, stands out to be the biggest beneficiary for this outsourcing, driven by technical expertise, cost efficiencies, globally accepted manufacturing standards and infrastructure. And within India, the consolidation in CDMO industry driven by need for providing a better and wider portfolio of services will further strengthen the company's position. The company is furrowing into injectable dosages, which will complement the existing CDMO offerings in oral solids and liquids, and will enable us to achieve higher margins. The company has planned to rupees 50 crores brownfield capex project at Dehradun Plant 2 for this business, which is primarily aimed towards liquid vials and lyophilized vials. And the company is expecting economies of scale and improved margins once this facility comes online. I will now take you through trade generics and OTC business. This vertical contributed roughly around 10% to the consolidated revenue for FY21. It consists of trade generic products, OTC brands, which include nutraceutical health supplement products. And these products are drugs for which patents are already expired and typically used as substitute to the branded expensive generic medicines. In this vertical, our products are sold to distributors directly and there is no promotion to doctors by medical representatives. As of FY21, the company distributed through 700 plus stockists and distributors spread across 15 states. This vertical is the fastest growing vertical for the company and has a CAGR of about 27% between FY19 and 21 with a number of brands on a CAGR basis growing faster than revenue at 30%. The main driver for this growth are lower cost and similar quality compared to branded generics and growing penetration in rural areas. Going forward, the company is expected to witness a similar growth rate in this vertical, driven by increase in width of product portfolio, as well as expansion in terms of geographic locations covered. I will now take you through the exports business. The exports vertical contributed roughly around 5% to the consolidated revenue for FY21. And this vertical is engaged in identifying high growth opportunities in semi-regulated international markets and select regulated markets. The motive is to develop and register product applications in order to obtain market authorizations for medicines and health su supplements. Subsequently, such products are sold to pharma companies and pharmacies in respective markets. We remain confident of overcoming the near-term challenges. The company, which is one of the top five CDMO players in terms of revenue, continues to leverage its strong position to diversify, value add, and expand the value proposition. The growth trajectory is expected to be robust, driven by innovative products, available capacity, and growth in the customer base as well as wallet share increase. Lastly, I would like to thank the investors and bankers for showing their confidence in the company and making IPO a great success with oversubscription of over 22.4x. I would like to also thank customers, suppliers, employees, and all of the vendors and stakeholders for their valued support and service. The company and its management remain committed to create value for stakeholders going forward. With this, let me invite Ms. Komal Gupta, our CFO, for the financial performance highlights. Thank you, Hitesh. I'll now take you to consolidated financial 
and operational highlights. First, I would like to highlight that given the nature of the business company operates in, the company's performance should be evaluated on annual basis and not on quarterly basis. The company reported a resilient performance despite the multiple headwinds. On a consolidated basis, revenue from operations stood at 111 crores as against 102.3 crores, a growth of 8.5% YOY. However, considering the impact of shift in revenue of rupees 7 crores from Q4 FY20 to Q1 FY21, the revenue growth would be 16.5% YOY. The revenue growth is not reflecting the industry growth trends due to the fact that industry growth was driven largely by antibiotics on account of COVID-19 second wave, whereas we are not present in that therapeutic area. So to that extent, we have not been able to participate in that growth trend. The EBITDA margins stood for the quarter at 11.5% as against 13.4% YOY. The company also incurred Rs. 0.4 crores ESOP related expenses during the quarter. Adjusted profit after tax stood at Rs. 6.7 crores as against 5.3 crores, up 26.4% YOY. Adjustments in FY21 fact include goodwill write off on account of acquisition of Windless Healthcare and tax benefit due to merger with Windless Healthcare. I'll now take you through vertical wise highlights. CDMO vertical highlights. Q1 revenue for the CDMO vertical stood at 95.7 crores, up 9% YOY, led to pickup in COVID-19 related therapies. CDMO vertical contributed approximately 86% to the consolidated revenue. Trade generics vertical Q1 revenue uh, stood at 12.3 crores, up 37% YOY. Trade generics vertical contributed approximately 11% to the consolidated revenue. Exports vertical highlights. Our Q1 revenue for the exports vertical stood at 2.2 crores, down 58% YOY, mainly on account of disruptions in the supply chain. The exports vertical contributed approximately 2% to the consolidated revenue. The company has made repayment of Rs 20 crores loans in August 2021 from the IPO proceeds, further strengthening the company's balance sheet. The company has utilized Rs 45 crores from IPO proceeds for the various activities mentioned in the RHP out of Rs 153.3 crores, roughly translating into 29% IPO proceeds utilization. The company is planning to utilize the entire proceeds by December 2022, which will further strengthen the company's value proposition while maintaining the strong balance sheet. We can now begin the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sudarshan Padmanabhan from JMPMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. So my question is, if I you know go through the presentation, which is uh, you know elaborate and very extensive, and uh, congrats on that. Uh, the number of clients that we've added and the number of brands that we added has consistently been you know higher than the you know sales growth. I mean, if I simply look at you know the revenue per brand or the revenue per customer, it's basically been coming down. Uh, just to understand, do we, you know, specifically like the last couple of years, has there been more customer addition towards the end of the year and of course there's COVID and therefore your customer addition does not necessarily reflect the actual, uh, you know, potential per customer in terms of growth? Um, sir, if I was to uh, take your question, uh, see, uh, for us, uh, if you see the Indian pharma market, uh, the top 50 companies have a much larger share in the market and uh, you know beyond that then you know this starts to come down uh, and beyond top 100 the uh, size of uh, each company is much smaller 
so uh, you know our uh, uh, customer profile also reflects the same so you know it is not necessary that every customer uh, looking at revenue per customer is probably not the right metric is what i want to say because different customers will have different potential and uh, as you also correctly said that depending on the time when they get introduced the uh, you know the number might be higher but they might not get the full year of uh, revenue contribution so um, you know uh, i i hope this um, somewhat uh, answers uh, the question sure, sure. and uh, i mean on the industry side you know you talked about you know 30% outsourcing you know primarily happening globally i mean what could be the kind of growth driver and what should we expect in terms of growth for the industry and growth for the company if you can give some color with respect to you know what what is the outsourcing pie in india and whether you know you see this opportunity also moving up more nearing the global side sure um so what we have seen in through our uh, you know uh, uh, primary market search that was done um, you know few months ago um is that uh, indian pharma large indian pharma players are not doing new capex for their india business and are relying on outsourcing partners like uh, windless and others so um, there is uh, an organic growth uh, of those brands which is essentially coming to uh, the outsourcing industry there is new launches so if you look at every year about uh, 4% of the growth uh, 3 to 4% comes from new launches and out of that almost 70% of uh, you know that new launches are coming from again outsourced partners uh, like windlass so uh, more and more uh, growth is coming uh, from the outsourcing industry uh, our numbers uh, which are a few months old uh seem to suggest that if the indian pharma market grows between uh, 9 to 11% the outsourcing industry for india uh, market will probably grow somewhere between uh, you know close to 13 to 14% those are the numbers that uh, you know uh, we got uh, from uh, industry reports sure and sir with respect to you know the margins and complexity i think uh, we have clearly moved up the you know uh, margins to some extent and also we continue to grab more market share on the complex side as well as targeting more on the uh, you know uh, chronic side where do we see the margins move from here say the next couple of years sir? so uh, this yeah okay so in terms of material margin um, we uh, no, i mean i'm not sure that uh, we talk about the couple of years but it, we are uh, in the coming 3 to 4 years what we expect is there are several factors that we can consider first is uh, the injectable business that we are going to start very soon that is a high margin business second is uh, our trade generics and exports division that we have has higher margin than our cdmo business and because these are low base uh, businesses we expect them to grow at a higher pace and to contribute more in the overall uh, revenue which means that some material margin would be coming from there and third is uh, currently we have uh, a capacity utilization which is not at the peak so as we reach the peak capacity utilization in all the uh, plants that we have like recently we have acquired plant 4 which is the windless healthcare facility and our plant 3 which we have recently repurposed for uh, from cephalosporin osd to the regular drug business so as we increase the capacity utilization in these plants uh, the operational efficiencies will kick in so with all these factors we see in the long term the material the overall um, profitability margin growing for the business so what is the current utilization ma'am the current utilization is in the uh, range of about 36% uh, thanks a lot i'll hand back to you thank you thank you a reminder to the participants to ask a question please press star and 1 
The next question is from the line of Manish Kanojia from MK Finca. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. I have two, three questions. Uh, so, firstly, uh, in the investor presentation, you have mentioned about you know uh, R and D outsourcing and domestic uh, CDM opportunities in detail. Can you please share uh, at what CAGR we expect to grow our uh, you know, CDMO business in the next three to five years? And uh, also what kind of market share we are expecting will have uh, in the next three to five years? Sure. Uh, so this uh, CDMO market is uh, unfortunately not covered by any of the you know market reports uh, outright. Um, and uh, in the market study that we got done, it was uh, uh, you know estimated through a lot of uh, primary research. Um, the uh, expectation is that uh, market will, uh, which is out, the total outsourcing market is about 20,000 crores in India today, and this is uh, both CDMO as well as CMO, and is expected to roughly double in five years um, to about 40,000 uh, crores. Uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, our, our long term view uh, we will uh, we are obviously uh, you know one of the leading players um, and we expect to grow uh, slightly faster than market so our uh, goal is uh, to uh, you know definitely target a better growth profile uh, than the overall market growth um, and in the long run, this is where uh, I think we should uh, we, we we are you know expecting ourselves to be as well. Understood. And so, secondly, uh, is the company planning to increase uh, the share of chronic and subchronic therapy? And if yes, uh, how the share of these therapies would look like uh, in the longer term? Sure. So currently, as you see, um, almost 60% of our business is in the chronic and subchronic uh, therapeutic areas. Um, and uh, you know, uh, you know, there is uh, in these areas we are uh, focused more on diabetes, um, cardiovascular, neuropsychiatry, uh, gastrointestinal, uh, these kind of um, disease uh, therapeutic uh, segments. And uh, we are looking to, uh, you know, a lot of our pipeline products uh, or new product development is focused on these therapeutic areas only. And, uh, you know, uh, whether doing value-added generics uh, in this space or bringing new fixed-dose combinations for uh, products which are coming off patent uh, in, these, uh, in this uh, domain, those are the ones that we are also bringing on and uh, therefore targeting uh, you know more momentum in this uh, uh, chronic and subchronic space understood and then lastly uh, is it possible to share margins and return ratios uh, you know, separately for our segments like cdmo trade generics and exports Actually, um, as these are so, we have the same plants. The four plants can actually serve all the three businesses: CDMO, exports, as well as uh, you know trade generics. So that's why it is uh, we only uh, look at the material margin business wise. But other than that, we don't really uh, see because it's actually more of a fixed cost allocation uh, for all the um, businesses instead of really uh, you know. Uh, uh, business-wise tracking, so it doesn't really make that much sense, so to say. But in terms of margins, can you, uh, uh, I mean, can you throw some light on ballpark figures? So the uh, trade generics has uh, about, you know, five to seven higher uh, uh, margin than the regular CDMO business, the material margin, and uh, the exports is even, uh, Four five percent higher than trade generally. Oh, understood. Okay, thank you. That's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akshay Jain from Jain Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good uh, afternoon. Uh, for a couple of questions. Uh, firstly, uh, how much growth in uh, revenue share? is expected from a generic business and how are the inquiries and conversions in this business? Uh, secondly, uh, are we 
uh, planning to expand uh, our offerings in the entire domestic market going forward, or we would like to penetrate further in the uh, 15 states where uh, we are existing for trade and with business. Uh, so, sir, uh, can you just say for your first question was how much growth? How much growth and uh, uh, revenue share is expected from a uh, generic business, and how are the inquiries and conversions happening in that business? Sure. Um, so this is in this business. Basically, uh, what uh, what is happening is that uh, we are targeting the B and C class towns in India. Uh, as you know, uh, you know there are only 400 odd uh, towns where the population is more than one lakh, and uh, enough doctors are there. So the branded generic model works out uh, with the medical reps in those places. But there are six and a half lakh villages and kasbas, very deep interiors, where even physicians are not there, and uh, you know there is uh, access uh, issue uh, regarding drugs. So in these areas, the drugs are sold directly through the uh, uh, distribution channel. So the stockist and then the retailer, and this is where Trade Generics uh, vertical of ours is also existing. So in this uh, vertical. Uh, we have been uh, building uh, strength in the sort of northern states so far. Now we are looking to expand more and, uh, you know, it's a nucleation and growth model. So we start somewhere and then start expanding around that uh, territory and going deeper and deeper uh, into the hinterland of that uh, area. Uh, we have uh, seen, uh, you know, uh, I mean, in terms of opportunity, it is there, uh, vast uh, opportunity is there. And we are trying to follow the population density and the market needs uh, from the state's perspective. So that's how we have been, uh, you know, uh, expanding in, in this vertical. Um, most of the time, um, the expansion is twofold. One is uh, geographic, um, as you picked up, but the second is also uh, around product portfolio. So, because we are working directly with the stockists who are just above the retailer, uh, we are trying to see, you know, what else can the stockist sell? Uh, what uh, is the credit profile of that, uh, you know, stockist uh, and retailer? And uh, that's how we are you know, building our product portfolio and launching more uh, products uh, to to go along. Um, I, I hope I answered your question, uh, you know, in terms of uh, how the growth uh, and market yes. share is yes. uh, developed. And your second part question was, sir? The second, uh, is our second question uh, pertains to the uh, expansion of our offerings into an entire domestic market going forward, or we would uh, restrict uh, itself to the 15 states where we are currently present in trade general Yeah. Um, so, sir, we currently we are looking to strengthen the uh, states that we have opened, and uh, we believe that there is a lot more, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, sort of opportunity to grow within these. And, uh, you know, it is uh, as we get, uh, you know, good talent and local expertise, then only we would want to open more states and get into those. So that is how we are building the business. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anupam Agarwal from Lucky Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, in your opening remarks, you mentioned about a 50 crore capex for the injectable plant. Uh, can you give us the economics for the plant as to by when it will be operational and uh, uh, at peak level of utilization, what can be the sales uh, from that plant? Uh, sure, sir. Uh, the uh, we injectable facility, you know, uh, after the construction requires a period of uh, media fill and validation. And uh, the you know uh, the time taken is slightly longer than typical oral solids. Uh, mm -hmm. We are expecting if everything goes smoothly and no disruptions uh, due to any uh, you know unanticipated things that our first commercial batch should roll out in uh, Feb of 23 uh, from this uh, facility. 
the mm-hmm. um, and uh, in this uh, space the asset turns are much lower so um, you know oral solids we have an asset turn of about uh, 4.5 but in this space the asset turn is more around 1.2 to 1.3 but the margins are much better so uh, yes. that is why uh, you know the peak uh, utilization on a 50 crore capex would be somewhere around 1.2 times that so 70 crore Understood. Understood. And this will be coming in by uh, FI24, all of it, mainly. Will we be able to uh, ramp up the facility in the first year itself? No, so there will be a, uh, you know, a, a, you know a gradual ramp, but obviously our efforts will be to see how much capacity we can tie early on as much as possible. Mm-hmm. We have the time, but uh, yes, I mean, uh, we, but there would still be, you know, sort of a phase-wise ramp up that will happen. Right. Uh, have we identified products in the space, in the injectable space for the plant? Uh, uh, yes. Have we gotten uh, orders? Have we gotten orders from uh, large pharma players? No, no, no. So we, I mean, uh, the, as I mentioned, the plant installation itself and uh, qualification will take some time. So mm-hmm. Feb of 23 is when we are looking to do the first commercialization. It will, uh, you know, commercialize. It will cater to all three of our divisions: so exports, trade generics, and CDMO. And uh, so, uh, you know, we are looking to, uh, you know, uh, take uh, advantage of uh, this facility, just like all other facilities, and build business on all three verticals. Um, to this. Understood. Uh- on the trade generic business, if you could, sir, give us how much is the domestic trade generic market uh, uh, on an overall level and uh, uh, how much would be the top three for players uh, taking the market share? So, uh, sir, it's very, again, not uh, covered. Uh, this kind of uh, trade generic market is not very well covered by either AIOCD uh, data or the um, you know IMS data. Uh, ITVI data. So, uh, you know, at the just general industry estimates is that this is somewhere in the range of uh, 25 to 30,000 crores. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, but, you know, please take it with a pitch of salt. And um, the largest player is, uh, of course, uh, CIPLA um, and Alchem. And uh, then we have uh, Lee Ford, which is uh, almost 1,500 crores, Laborate. So these are some of the more prominent names which have uh, built a significant business. Understood, understood. Uh, so lastly, from the IPO proceed, I missed your part. Uh, sorry, from the 150 crores that we raised, uh, uh, how much has been uh, deployed for debt repayment and how much are we looking to do for the rest of the money? So we have about 45 crores is what we have utilized uh, mm-hmm. till now. 20 crores was for the uh, debt repayment and 25 crores is for the uh, you know general corporate uh, purposes that we have utilized okay. by now. So about 29 percent we have uh, utilized. And uh, for the balance money we intend to go for the brownfield and uh, what is the rest of the rest of the purpose? So there is about uh, uh, 40. Uh, more, so more 48 kind of a crore amount which will be used for increase in working capital and uh, 50, uh, you know about 50 crores will be for injectables and small portion of plant for expansion uh, rest is for uh, gen- general corporate purposes in addition to 20 crores that we have already utilized for the loan repayment Understood, understood. Uh, sir, on the CDMO business, uh, if you can quantify how much is the overall market that we want to cover, uh, let's say across therapies in the chronic space, uh, what would be the macro picture as to the market opportunity for us? Um, sir, uh, it's the CDMO uh, market opportunity, as I mentioned, uh, you know, is uh, somewhere around 20,000 crores today, uh, expecting to be doubled in five years, uh, as per the industry report, uh, you know, uh, that we uh, that we got. Uh, in terms of you know uh, growth, uh, it will come by addition of dosage forms. So we are doing already, you know, oral solids uh, to a large extent uh, and liquids in um, 360 crores that we do. 
Um, but we don't have a lot of other dosage forms like uh, protein powders, like uh, hormones, steroids, ointments, soft gel. Uh, you know, injectable is the one that we are adding now. Um, you know, uh, in an organic manner. Uh, but there is a lot of room to grow by expanding laterally and then bringing uh, new innovative products in those dosage forms for customers. So this is how we are looking to, uh, you know, at least begin with injectables. Understood, understood. So just one last question. Uh, so you mentioned that uh, if IPM grows by 9 to 11%, we'll be growing by about 13, 14%. Uh, and the other two businesses, which is uh, export and trade genetics, will go much faster at 30-35%. Uh, what should be the sales mix, let's say, 3 to 5 years down the line, if, uh, if, if all numbers pan out as planned? Okay, so, um, so let me uh, slightly uh, mention this, that, you know, uh, five years hence, um, we are roughly looking to, uh, you know, double our... Um, CDMO business, uh, triple the trade generics business, and uh, quadruple the exports business. This is the sort of internal goal that uh, you know we are uh, uh, pushing for, and uh, you know so the the sales mix will therefore happen uh, you know accordingly because you know the Understood. smaller businesses. Yeah. yeah. I'll do the math. I'll do the math. Thank you. This helps a lot. Thank you so much, and I'm wishing you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Participants to ask the question, please press star and one now. The next question is from the line of Akash Mehta from Kapil's Investment. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, most of my other questions have been answered. I just had a small question in relation to the exports. Uh, I think you mentioned uh, the exports account for about 5%. Uh, so it's a very small business for the company, but can you share how are the gross margins and return ratios for the business? And can we expect this business to contribute about 8 to 10% in the next 3 to 5 years? So in terms of the growth, Akash, as Hitesh mentioned, uh, in uh, you know, five, you know five, about 5 years, we expect the business to quadruple. So, you know, broadly, it would be in the range that you are talking about if, you know, everything goes well. Then, uh, in terms of the margins, as I mentioned, the margin for the exports business, uh, we don't track EBITDA uh, or profitability margin separately. But material margin-wise, the exports business is the highest margin business for us. Uh, as trade generics has higher margins than the domestic CDMO, and uh, exports is even 4-5% higher than the trade generics uh, segment. Okay, so it can get to those eight to ten percent levels in the next three to five years. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, that's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditi Savan from ABM Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, I have only one question. I like. As a company, Z100 company, are we planning to share the profits with the shareholder? Um, so, um, thank you for that question, ma'am. We are, uh, you know, looking to have a dividend policy. And, uh, you know, in fact, uh, at this meeting we had a proposal and our board asked us to uh, get some benchmarking data for our sized companies in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the range. And uh, we are looking forward to in our uh, next quarter, uh, you know, by, the, by when we come for the earnings call for next quarter, to have uh, you know a policy in place with uh, some guidance on that. Okay, okay. we'll wait for that, that information. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants to ask a question. Please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Asad, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, Good. My question is, uh, there's a empl employee cost has gone up. Uh, is it likely to come down very soon? So the employee cost uh, increase is caused by uh, several factors. 
like uh, the plant 3 that uh, was not operational earlier has uh, become operational. So fixed cost uh, that way for uh, that plant has increased. There is 4 million of ESOP reserve uh, for the employee stock option scheme that we have declared uh, last year. So uh, 4 million is impact of that and about uh, 2 million is the director salary proportion, 3% of profit and things like these. So uh, how it will pan out is, you know, cost-wise there might not be reduction. Where the profitability will grow will be from operational efficiencies kicking in as we increase the capacity utilization and the revenue numbers grow. Okay, ma'am. That would answer my question. I had one more question. Uh, how much cost, cost will we be saving uh, by repayment of the loan, the 20 crore what we have repaid? Okay, on 20 crore, we had uh, about 8% of uh, was the 8% per annum was the uh, interest cost, which we will be saving. But the loan was taken in March uh, of FY21, so there is not a very uh, you know in FY. So like to like YOI numbers, you won't see a reduction coming in. It's just the additional cost that would have uh, come in the books that won't come anymore. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, my last question is, uh, as we know that the margin in the exports are more, uh, are they going to increase? We already work at a very uh, high margin. Uh, we are not in the um, regulated markets like US or Europe. We work in the ROW markets. In that range, we already are working at a very good uh, material margin uh, percentages. So we expect to, you know, continue to work in that kind of a margin area. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. That's it, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, please press star and one. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand over the conference over to Mr. Hitesh Vinlas for closing comments. Thank you very much, um, uh, everyone, for uh, giving us this opportunity to speak about our business uh, with you. Um, we are, uh, you know, a young company, uh, you know, focused on uh, doing uh, a great job. And uh, you know, uh, very much appreciate your questions um, and support. Uh, uh, please uh, do reach out to our IR consultants, uh, strategic growth advisors, or us directly should you have any further qu uh, queries. Thank you very much again, and stay safe. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Hitesh, but we have one more participant in the queue. May I uh, select sure. some more the yeah. participants? The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, Nitin Agarwal, please go ahead with a question. Your line is in uh, uh, Mr. Nitin Agarwal, we cannot hear you, sir. As there is no response from the I have will move. Thank you so much. On behalf of Inlas Biotech Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.